decision. <laughs> Glad I'm not in your shoes. No, I'm kidding. Um, no, I, I actually think um, hmm, big companies have a lot to offer. And I think at Citigroup, we are really fortunate in having some of the smartest people teaching us uh, things that I had no idea about. Everything from like credit derivatives to learning how to make a better Excel macro to understanding the way the world works um, in the capital market space. And, and they also had a really great program. And that's why they can recruit such you know, awesome people and, uh, and train you up. Um, so big companies, for what they are, there's a lot of resources there. There's a lot of training. There are great people. And it's a great way to start in a, in a supported area. That doesn't mean to say I wouldn't go and try to start another company. I, I just didn't know any better, really. I think uh, that track for us at the time was really defined into, uh, you know, my, my college career went from like freshmen selling knives to going and opening office to interning at Merrill Lynch. And then I was like, all right, I'll go into finance. Um, so in, in the time that you have, I would experiment. If you're like, thinking about entrepreneurships, experiment. Launch a, you know, launch a company tonight if you want to. Make yeah, a at the hackathon. Yeah, at the hackathon. There we go. That's right. Yeah. So I think, um, yeah, I pick people's. I probably pick people's brains a little bit more about what opportunities there are. I didn't know. I think uh, having that would have gave me a more per, uh, uh, a better path. But I think I'd probably do the same. No, I don't think I would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I probably moved to San Francisco way earlier. Yeah. Okay. What's up, Doug? You want to go? Oh, can you make sure to hold on the button? This guy? Okay. Um, this is for Rajiv. Um, when you were like really early on at Dropbox, like day one, um, did you know it was going to be big when you had to think about sort of scaling? So like, did you build it around the idea of like, oh, we're going to double every you know month, or or did you sort of just try to get a product out and then like, oh shit, we have to refactor the whole thing? <laughs> Yeah, um, when I started, I wasn't working on the server stuff like at that time. It was kind of, it wasn't a big focus of what we were doing. That was more months down the road when we started going at a, at a, at a better clip. Um, yeah, I was, I was working on some product stuff initially. Uh, it was when we started, I think it was when we kind of started to get on Dig, if you guys remember that website. Uh, when we when we started to get on Dig and on uh, Hacker News and we started getting a lot of press, then it, then it became clear that we had to focus uh, more on server engineering. And then at that time, I just sort of decided to focus entirely on that. But it wasn't it wasn't an initial focus because we really just wanted to focus on the product, which I think is important. Um, instead of trying to make it scale without knowing if it was going to be successful. Are there questions? No questions. OK. Mm -hmm. What's been your biggest challenge? Yeah, what's, what's been our biggest challenge? Uh, for me, it's focus. It's a very, like, every, I am interested in a lot of things, and I want to do a lot of things. I just need to be a little bit more focused in trying to get thing I'm working on done and then moving on to the next one. Uh, yep. How do you keep yourself on task? Uh, Matt keeps me on task. <laughs> Not Matt. <laughs> so if I didn't have, I'd be like this buoy out in the ocean. Just, oh, there's, that's cool. But yeah, I. Uh, well, how do you guys work? Do you do to-do lists? Do you use apps to help you track what you're doing? Asana? Uh, I use a lot of, I use task paper right now. OK. It's just uh, it's multi-platform and it's simple. That's what I use to, to manage my tasks. And then, do you guys use Asana or Trello? Or any, does that sound familiar? Maybe. Trello's cool if you want to do project management and work in a team and have a Kanban type of style of moving things along in a, in a process. Um, Evernote is also really good now. I mean, they're taking over. And every, they're everywhere. So that's a good one to use as well. Rajiv, are there any things you do to help you focus? Uh, I, I just use, usually have like a text file of to-do stuff 
and I try to cross it off. Uh, pretty mm -hmm. simple. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah, challenges. and any challenges? Um, I think the biggest challenge for me was kind of balancing stuff that kind of had longer term, I guess like longer term investment type of projects with uh, short term things. And I'm trying to think of concrete examples, but it's it's uh, it's pretty hard. There's always stuff that you can kind of knock out and and get done as far as things you need to do. And there's always stuff that needs to get done, but is sort of looming in the future, like you need to hire another engineer for your team. And that sort of thing pays off, but it takes a while, um, you know, versus just doing work yourself. And I always found that to be the hardest challenge was thinking, you know, should I be spending more time trying to find engineers for this team instead of trying to do all the work myself? So since you've done so much recruiting, could you tell them what you look for in an engineer? Just like the top things that really make a candidate stand out. I think, uh, I think a big thing that's maybe atypical, you know, obviously you're looking for somebody that's good at programming and, and whatever. Um, I think we, li we like to find people with intellectual curiosity that seem to be curious about the world around them. If we ask them a question, they kind of want to play around with it instead of just kind of answer it and get it done with. Um, people that are just, that find the challenges inherently interesting rather than something to just get done. I think that's, that's just one random thing. Um, and then we also put a big emphasis on cultural fit, whether we thought we'd get along with people. Nice. Any other questions? Sure. <clears throat> uh, there's obviously a, a big risk in joining a startup company or something that's new. Um, like, so how did you deal with that risk, like the financial security and like all this kind of different things that like knowing every day that this company could fail like next week or like next month, like because it's brand new. So like how did you guys deal with that or combat that or just did you push through or did you, was it like nagging in the back of your head like when you guys were working? That basically my question. Uh, you know, I think the risk is maybe overstated sometimes. It depends on the situation. But I think if you, I mean, if you have some funding or some money, you can afford to pay yourself not as well as you get paid at a big company. But it's not, it, it's not that bad. Um, compared to, say, getting a job at Google or something like that, when I started, I was definitely making, like, a lot less. Um, but... It, when you're working all the time, it kind of doesn't really matter anyways. Your lifestyle is entirely at the office. Um, so it never really felt like that much of a pay cut. Currently, it's Elon Musk. You know, he's, a, he's a beast, right? I mean... Everyone know who that is? Who doesn't? Tesla, Tesla SpaceX. Hey, We're going to Mars. We're going to be running cars <laughs> on, on the sun. It's going to be amazing. He's going to get Rajiv to Mars. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> astronaut, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have to say the same thing. It's kind of an, it's, it's the obvious answer, but I think it's the right one. He's like Iron Man, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> Is there anyone else that comes to mind? Um, I mean, there are a lot of great people out there. Richard Branson is mm -hmm. awesome. Um, I mean, and he's, he does a really good job on making himself a brand and putting himself out there. Um, yeah, I mean, there, there are a ton out there. Who else do you like? Nobody can't think of, else. Can't think of <laughs> <laughs> no one comes to the <laughs> Okay. Uh, now that you work for both of them, looking back, Google Drive versus Dropbox, do you use them both, or how do you how do you look at them as they compare both being cloud services? Uh, I I tried Google Drive once and I couldn't get it to work, so I <laughs> <laughs> it was you know I pretty much I've always been a loyal Dropbox user. So it's no contest for me, but. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so use Dropbox. Going off that question, do you pay for Dropbox extra like storage, or do you have free two gigabytes? I I have a free more than two gigabytes. <laughs> I mean, you better, yeah. <laughs> Hold on the button. Uh, you mentioned education earlier. Uh, how do you see online uh, classes such as Code Academy or Udacity changing the scape of education? Yeah, I think it's huge. I mean, I think it's, we, we don't know what the impact is going to be yet. I think it's really exciting. Um, I think coding is something in particular that's a great thing to tackle that people are doing, right, like code, with Code Academy, because you don't really need any credentials to be a programmer. Uh, the same way you do to be like a doctor or a lawyer, you know, you don't need that piece of paper. You just need to have to show that you can do the skills. I think what'll be interesting to see is if those companies can figure out a way to um, give people credentials so that they have credibility to them. Because right now you can kind of put it on your resume. You know, I took a class on Coursera, but it doesn't have as much impact. So when they figure out a way to to have to carry some weight to that like i have a you know real certificate and it means something that's going to be huge have you guys tried out coursera code academy and all of those if you haven't you should definitely check it out what well, treehouse or mm -hmm. everyone does everyone use that stuff can you guys raise hands with any of those code academy treehouse Tinker learn if you want to learn iOS. Hmm. Very good. That's awesome. Cool. Any other questions? OK. Let's uh, talk about um, When it comes to startups, what are you guys like, looking at right now? What are you excited to see come up and start to make a new product? Is there anything that stands out for you? Or even within education, is there anything kind of along the lines of what we're talking about, anything in the future that you're looking forward to seeing? Uh, there's something called uh, you know, Dev Boot Camp. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it. It's a, it's a program that you can kind of sign up if you don't know how to code. And they, it's a physical program, so you fly out to San Francisco or Chicago, and you work with, I guess, a number, maybe 40 other people in your class to learn how to code. It's sort of hours and hours a day, like 12 hours a day. And at the end of it, they help you get hired um, at companies, at partner companies that want to uh, get these like excited new developers to be working for them. And I think that's, I think that is pretty cool. It solves the problem of educating people as well as then figuring out what to do with that education, getting them hired and giving them that credential. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a, that's a good one to look out for. Even Justin Kahn's brother just went through that. Yeah, Justin's brother went through that, and now he has a now he has a job doing Rails consulting. Yeah, um, which is pretty cool. Really cool. Is there just a, a couple other yeah. companies that I just thought about it. Um, there's, I think the quantified self is really interesting, right? So I don't know if you guys have Fitbits or Jawbones or any like pedometer apps. There's a free app called Moves right now, which basically tracks where you go and how many steps you take, whether you're on your bike or you're walking. Um, that's cool. There's this um, idea of sh using resources that are not being tapped into uh, or in entering a space that someone's already in. So you guys ever hear of Uber? Uh, if, you if you don't know, it's a, it's a car service. It's a private car service. You can basically be anywhere in the city. It's like, yeah, we get picked up in this nice black car and people pick you up and you just, you go. And, um, but, you know, people are always complaining, like, it's a little bit expensive, and I don't need to be a baller, so you need to get to work. Mm -hmm. And so uh, a, a bunch of competitors launched. So Lyft, Sidecar, you guys know these guys? No? Mm -hmm. Maybe? Um, but what they did was interesting. They let anybody that has a car, well, they screen them a little bit. They'd get their driver's license to see what's going on, if they've been in any collisions or had any tickets. But uh, you can basically volunteer to, to drive people and then at the end they can donate money to you for, for driving them. So when I left San Francisco I took a lift to the airport, talked with this girl who taught me how to do some meditation, which is kind of interesting. But I think there's there's a lot of 
uh, opportunity there, where they're looking at a space a little bit differently um, and share, like ha enabling the masses to, to utilize a framework like that. Awesome. Any other questions? I have one. So what about your education translated over into startups? Because I think a lot of times, IST is a great major for getting into startups. But like, I'm studying theater and advertising. Other people are studying things that don't really relate to startups so much. So were there things that you learned in the classroom or even in your college experience in general that you felt really helped you in startups? <laughs> no. Not, not really. Uh, <laughs> You know, the computer science major that um, that we did was like, it was really cool. It was really interesting stuff, but not not super relevant for, uh, for like day-to-day -day programming work. And so I'd say that like, it w you wouldn't be at a disadvantage not having done computer science. The most, like I said before, the most relevant thing was just getting to know the people that you're gonna be working with. Um, but you pretty much just learn on the job. I think that's the other great thing about startups is that you might be working on programming, but you might be working on recruiting the next day, and you don't know anything about that, so you have to kind of figure it out. Um, and you know, school doesn't teach you anything about that. So, yeah, I, th I think uh, some of th I was just thinking about. It. I initially said no, but then I was kind of looking <laughs> at our other uh, things, and I mean, I think some of the classes definitely teach you how to think a little bit, problem solve. Um, looking at how to break down your workload and being able to projectize it and, and do that. I do think Penn State has a ton of organizations that you can learn a ton from. Um, so I had the benefit of being, anyone involved in THON? You everyone knows what that is? No, I'm kidding. Mm -hmm. uh, so working on THON, uh, I was a line ambassador. I, I was in a fraternity. I think getting involved in these different organizations and seeing how it's almost like cultures, right? Mm -hmm. In Penn State, there's all these little cultures that kind of go on, and everyone's very student. It's all student powered and student driven. Um, that, that I think is probably one of the biggest things I would say Penn State has to offer, and you can learn that mm -hmm. hustle, that like get out there and get stuff done, um, and working with people to do that. And on that note, I think the hackathon is a great chance to do that tonight. So. For anybody that doesn't know, ha with a hackathon, you get 24 hours to build whatever you want. So a website, mobile app, piece of hardware technology. And then at the end of the 24 hours, you pitch it to a panel of judges. And then they're going to select the winners. And that's happening tonight in IST. So you can ask me questions later if you have any. But any other questions for these guys? How are we on for, for time? One more question? OK, one more really awesome question. <laughs> or one more not so awesome question. <laughs> yeah? Do, uh, do you think that people treat you differently because of your entrepreneurial talents and skills? Do you do you think anybody comes up do they do you are you perceived as rock stars or do people just treat oh, yeah. you? Uh, <laughs> and how do you deal with that? I mean does it affect you? I flew coach. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, mm. No. <laughs> uh, I actually, I think um, in San Francisco, in Bay Area, I mean, everyone's pretty great. And I think being humble uh, really helps being approachable, but also approaching other people. So I don't think, uh, I, definitely not a rock star by any means, but I think having that humility is, is, is a really great thing to have, and on, um, are you are you a rock star? <laughs> no, <laughs> I I, uh, I think in San Francisco in particular, there's a huge concentration of talent. I mean, you can walk into any coffee shop and point out like tons of successful people. That guy started that thing. That guy started that thing. That guy's like a billionaire, like just in one coffee shop. And I think it's there's just a ridiculous concentration of talent. I think people are pretty humble too in San Francisco. They don't necessarily wear it around. They're just wearing their startups hoodie, um, and you wouldn't if you didn't know them. You wouldn't necessarily know, you know, all the stuff that they had done. I think that's pretty cool. Well, awesome. 
Well, thank both of you so much. This was really great. And I yeah. hope you all got something out of it. <laughs> Good work, guys. <gasps>